Mr. Malcolm, what do you think of Martin Luther King? I think that any black man who teaches black people to turn the other cheek and suffer peacefully after they've been turning the cheek and suffering peacefully for 400 years in a, in a land of bondage under the most cruel, inhuman, and wicked slave master that any people have ever been under, he is doing those people an injustice and he's a traitor to his own people. Nobody should teach the black man in America to turn the other cheek unless someone is teaching the white man in America to turn the other cheek. And no one should advocate any peaceful suffering to black people unless the, black, the white man is going to practice the same kind of peaceful suffering. What Martin Luther King is doing is disarming the black people of America of their God-given right and of their natural right. And the law of nature gives a man a right to defend himself when he's attacked. And God's law itself gives a man the right to defend himself when he's attacked. So uh, peaceful suffering and passive resistance and all of that uh, stuff is all right maybe in India somewhere where the people in India outnumbered the whites uh, uh, about a, a million to one. But here in America, when you tell, uh, that's like an elephant sitting down on a, on a, on a mouse in, in India with Gandhi. But in America, you have the... The mouse now trying to sit down on the elephant, thinking that he's going somewhere, and it's, and it's absurd. Don't you think that perhaps the idea of nonviolent resistance is a tactic which disarms the white community as much, if not more, than it does the Negro? No, you don't disarm any white community with any, uh, uh, by confining yourself to any particular method. If you want freedom, then you should get freedom, like Patrick Henry said, by whatever method is necessary. If you are not willing to pay the price for freedom, you don't deserve freedom. Pr oh, I'm sorry. I didn't want to interrupt you. Go on. No, that's all right. Yeah. Well, it seems to me that actually the basis of distinction here is one, is a distinction of goals. Dr. King's goals are quite different from yours. He believes in integration, complete well, integration of society. If, if, if no, well, that's where Dr. King is mixed up. Uh, his goal should be the solution of the problem of the black man in America. Now, not integration. Integration is the method toward obtaining that goal. And what the Negro leader has done is gotten himself wrapped up in the method and has forgotten what the goal is. The goal is the, is the, is the dignity of the black man in America. He wants respect as a human being. He wants recognition as a human being. Now, if integration will get him that, all right. If segregation will get him that, all right. If separation will get him that, all right. But after he gets integration and he still doesn't have this dignity and this uh, recognition as a human being, then his problem is still not solved. Well, isn't this exactly what Dr. King is looking towards, and that is the day when the Negro will be treated with dignity? Wasn't this, after all, the result of the Montgomery bus boycott? No, because uh, I don't think you can, uh, having an opportunity to ride either on the front or the back or in the middle, of someone else's bus doesn't dignify you. When you have your own bus, then you have dignity. When you have your own school, you have dignity. When you have your own country, you have dignity. When you have something of your own, you have dignity. But whenever you are begging for a chance to participate in that which belongs to someone else, or use that which belongs to someone else on an equal basis with the owner, that's not dignity, that's ignorance. The, if I may add, uh, for instance, King and these others will say that they are fighting for the Negro to have equal job opportunities. How can people, a, a group of people such as our people, who own no factories, have equal job opportunities competing against a race that owns the factories? The only way the two can have equal job opportunities is if black people have factories as well as white people have factories. And then black, we can em employ whites or we can employ blacks, just like they can employ whites or they can employ blacks. But as long as the factories are in the hands of the whites, the housing is in the hands of the whites, the school system is in the hands of the whites, you have a situation where the blacks are constantly begging the whites, can they use this or can they use that? That's not any kind of equal equality of opportunity, nor does it lend to toward one's dignity. Well, would you not admit that the situation in the South today for the Negro is better than it was, let's say, 10 years ago? No, because 10 years ago, the black man knew what his condition was, and today, because of the world revolution that's taking place uh, all over this earth, the black man would be fighting for what he knows is his by right. But the uh, movement on the part of King and the others has done nothing but slow down the militancy that is inherent in the nature of the black man. All over this world, people are standing up for freedom. 
In this country, these Negro leaders have Negroes sitting, sitting down, thinking that, that there's dignity towards sitting in. I might add, ma'am, how in the world can you say or can anyone say that it will dignify the American Negro to beg in or wade in or plead in when the people in Hungary didn't beg in, they were freedom fighters and they fought for their freedom and they came to this country and they were Hungarians, they were communists from a communist country and right now those Hungarian freedom fighters can get jobs that student sit-ins can't get. They can go and sleep and live in hotels that Martin Luther King himself can't live in. So, and they are recognized and respected because they are fighters, not because they're sit-inners or freedom writers. 